Hello, I'm Amy Trigg. I am an actor and writer from Essex. I uh, wrote a play called Reasons You Shouldn't Love Me, which was co-produced by Payne's Plough. And Reasons is a one woman show about a woman called Juno. And it's about her navigating her early adulthood whilst dealing with trauma from her childhood. And she has spina bifida, like me. So I started off as an actor. I trained in musical theatre at Mount View and when I left I uh, was completely focused on being an actor. Um, I'd always enjoyed writing but I didn't think it was maybe the path I was going to go down. Um, and then I realised that musical theatre at the time wasn't very um, keen or uh, <laughs> adaptable for uh, a disabled performer. So I decided to ditch my singing lessons and instead invest in improv lessons and courses and then that led to sketch comedy which led to stand-up which led to me uh, being part of panel discussions which led to me um, uh, writing a, a, an essay for this book called Feminists Don't Wear Pink and Other Lies and then off the back of that I was like huh the things I've been enjoying this whole time have all been things where I've had a part in the uh, in creating the work and so that's when I decided to focus on writing and acting as well Reasons You Shouldn't Love Me was my first play. It was the first play I wrote, and I wrote it when I was kind of on downtime from an acting job that I was doing. Uh, it was like rep theatre, so we had, every now and then we had a performance off, so I went and wrote. And I didn't really know what to do with it when it was done, so I uh, decided to send it to everyone and anyone that would read it. So that was schemes, competitions, programmes, prizes, such as the Women's Prize for Playwriting. And um, I really liked the look of the Women's Prize for Playwriting because everyone just seemed supportive and kind and you know passionate about the work so I felt really comfortable sharing my play with them and you know, sharing a bit of my heart and um, then eventually uh, I was shortlisted for or longlisted then shortlisted then was a finalist and then won the Women's Prize for Playwriting and it was um, sounds really dramatic I always feel dramatic when I say it but it, it was life-changing because it led to uh, my relationship with Payne's Plough and the Kiln Theatre and led to reasons being produced quite quickly and getting an agent and all that so yeah the Women's Prize for Playwriting is a yes from me. So I managed to get reasons on at the Kiln pretty soon after winning the prize. Um, the Kiln are amazing, I've uh, maintained a relationship with them uh, since getting uh, reasons on there and what I love about the Kiln is that they're really open to uh, artist authenticity. You know, um, they care about the integrity of their artists and make sure that what they put on the stage is something that the writer, director, whoever really uh, believe in. And um, I think giving that freedom to writers, especially, you know, me, it was my first play, being given that freedom was, um, yeah, I was very, very lucky to be in that situation at that point. And I'm on attachment with The Kiln now. Uh, writing another play. So uh, yeah, I think we like each other. I'm really looking forward to bringing Reasons You Shouldn't Love Me back to the stage. We are going on tour and then returning to the Kiln Theatre and it's going to be quite a different run I think because the first time we performed it uh, was when there was social distancing in theatres so we were kind of working with uh, half capacity I guess. Uh, so going back and doing it at the Kiln with a full audience is um, it's going to be really exciting. I wrote Reasons because I felt like it was an important play that should exist and it didn't and I thought well I guess I'll go for it. Um, it's a play that for me is a love letter to my younger self and I hope that younger humans who maybe find themselves in a similar situation to me see a little bit of themselves reflected in the play. And actually beyond that, I hope it's a universal story that people can relate to. But I think, yeah, the reason I wrote it is because I wanted people to see themselves on stage. I think that all art should be a mix of uh, light and shade. So with reasons, I really like playing about with making the audience laugh, making them feel comfortable, and then suddenly being like, bam, drama. Um, because I think it's good to make the audience feel comfortable and then throw them off kilter a little bit, keeps things, keep them on their toes. There is obviously a lack of disability representation on stage and screen, but um, I, I do think it's improving and I think it would be remiss of me not to say that 
you know, there were loads of artists before me and, you know, there were my peers who were working really hard to get those characters on stage and get those stories seen. Um, but I think with reasons, the thing it does for um, changing the perception of disability is, yes, educating and at some point answering the question, why is she disabled? But also making sure that before that, the audience gets to know Juno as a character and falls in love with her and sees themselves in her. I think often people see stories that, um, like say a non-disabled person sees a story about a disabled person and thinks, okay, I'll watch it, but that's nothing to do with me. And hopefully Reasons um, changes that and makes it more universal. The best bit of advice I've got as a writer, an actor and kind of person in general um, is to take the work seriously, but not necessarily yourself. And I think it just helps me take myself and my ego out of the work and create something uh, without the constraints of that. When it comes to tips for writers who are starting out, I think it's really good to hear your work out loud. So if you have a nice group of friends, maybe you're part of um, a playwriting group, or uh, I know that me and my friends got together and read plays over Zoom during lockdown, something like that. Um, if you can ask nicely and get them to maybe read your play, that's really, really helpful. And I think as well for me, I always read a lot of my work out loud. Um, I think the actor side of my brain wants to make sure that the lines are all comfortable to say and everything. So I think that's really helpful reading it out loud um, and recording yourself and then listening it back like when you're in the car or something, um, I really like. And also finding uh, your network, finding your tribe of writers who you can text in the middle of the night and be like, ah, I've got a deadline, help. Um, that's been that's been a lifesaver for me, having those WhatsApp groups to reach out to. The change I'd like to see in the theatre sector is making sure that the people we're finally welcoming into the sector have the opportunity to climb up the ladder, because I feel like, um, you know, we are becoming more diverse and we are uh, opening the doors a little bit more and there are different ways of getting into the industry now. I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying that all the problems are solved, but for me, I find it difficult that most meetings I'm in, I very rarely get notes from another disabled uh, creative. Um, and I just think diversity higher up is something that needs to be addressed. And not just for disability, I'm thinking everything, let's solve all the world's problems. Mm -hmm.